Welcome to our weekly recap of the latest news from the solar industry compiled by the American Solar Energy Society. Now, I'm Jay Warmke with SolarPVTraining.com, and this is the news from the solar industry for the week of April 7th. Now, the Institute for Local Self-Reliance has issued its annual um, scorecard for the various states within the United States um, on how their policies affect the adoption of renewable energy. And the news is most of the states are failing and the rest of them aren't doing that great either. The report grades them on policies such as net metering, third party ownership, ease of interconnection, and uh, access to community solar, along with some other metrics. Uh, of the 50 states, only Illinois rated a B. Uh, none of the states got an A rating this year. Uh, 13 received C. Um, thir uh, 13 received Ds. Sorry, 11 got Cs. And 26 were reported with failing grades, F. Now, the report indicates that there's been a lot of backtracking this year. In 2023, this report rep um, had four states receiving an A rating. Uh, there were 14 states receiving B, 6 got a C, 14 got a D, and only 13 were failing last year. Increasingly, severe weather events are having an effect on the adoption of solar across the country. In March, a dramatic hailstorm hit uh, a large solar array known as the Fighting J Solar Farm located in Fort Bend County, Texas, damaging thousands of solar panels uh, during that storm. Golf ball sized hail hit this field on March 15th. Um, hail is increasingly becoming a problem for solar panels. Uh, the manufacturers are making larger solar panels and they're using thinner and thinner uh, glass to try and reduce the cost of these panels. Damage from underperformance uh, of solar arrays due to weather events such as this or just malfunctions in the materials uh, are estimated to cost the industry about two and a half billion dollars each year. The average claim from a storm uh, ends up being about 54, $58.4 million. And of the claims on solar, manuf on solar facilities, about 55% of them are the result of hailstorms. So now um, developers increasingly are using uh, a process where as a storm approaches, they turn all of the solar panels into stow mode, basically vertically, so that as the hail falls, it has less of a chance of damaging these arrays. The U.S. median price for solar panels has declined by about 31% over the last year. Uh, according to a report by ANSA, ANSA is a solar panel and battery procurement organization. Now, prices fell from about 40 cents a watt in March of 2023 down to below 28 cents a watt in February of this year. Now, the falling prices are the result of a worldwide glut in solar panels. China continues to dramatically expand its production of uh, solar manufacturing capacity, accounting for about 85% of the growth in production capacity worldwide. At the same time, other nations such as the U.S. are putting policies in place to try and expand their domestic production capacity to avoid a heavy reliance on Chinese um, solar panels. The result is that there's a worldwide glut with production far exceeding worldwide demand at the moment. There's an old saying that the wind doesn't always blow and the sun doesn't always shine. But according to a recent report, that may not indeed be the case. Uh, this report by Ilotech, uh, a solar and wind assessment group, studied about 300 sites. Now, these sites are heavy concentrations of wind turbines. They account for about 80% of the wind production uh, electrical generation worldwide. They studied these sites over a period of 15 years. And while the amount of electricity generated from a specific turbine may vary and vary widely from year to year by as much as 25%, when you combine all of these or aggregate the entire worldwide production, the variation in wind generation really only changes plus or minus 3% from year to year. And we couldn't pass up this week without talking about the solar eclipse. 
Now, global officials had estimated that the eclipse would reduce power production as it crossed the U.S., reducing it by about 30 gigawatts. Now, that's the equivalent of turning off about 30 nuclear power plants. Now, while the totality, uh, the darkness there, only lasts a little over four minutes if you're right in the, the path of this eclipse, the reduction in solar gain during the eclipse lasts for about three and a half hours and extends far beyond the area where this uh, pathway of totality is. So the estimates were that as much as 71% of solar production uh, in the eastern portion of the country, 45% in the west, and in Texas as much as 93% of the solar generation could be impacted um, by the eclipse. But turned out cloud cover during the eclipse over much of the pathway actually mitigated some of these losses. So the impact was not as dramatic as officials had estimated. And that is the news from the solar industry for this week. We'll see you next week.